Karen from ediblewildfood.com here, and you're looking at couch grass, which is also known as twitch or quick or quitch or dog. You name it, it's got a lot of common names. Either way, Elemis repens or Agropyron repens. This is a very common grass, and it's actually not native to North America. This is definitely native to Europe and Asia. Let me just zoom in here. Farmers, of course, consider this a huge nuisance because it can get into their fields and it takes over their fields and it causes absolute grief. However, apparently this type of grass produces some kind of chemical substance, and I'm not too sure the name of it, actually. And it's supposed to inhibit the growth of other plants, which you can see here, it's not doing that. But this is my garden, or part of my garden anyway. So here's another uh, seed head right there. Let's try to get in close. Now, why am I talking about a grass? Pretty simple. This variety of grass can be consumed, and I'll tell you more about that in just a little bit. Now for tons of information. There are apparently more than 400 different types of grasses that can be consumed worldwide. And these are known for being edible. And of course, some of them are the common ones that we know. And they're very healthy because of the proteins and chlorophyll content. And in most grass species, there's magnesium, phosphorus, iron, calcium, uh, potassium, and zinc. There's just so many benefits. Now, chances are you are eating some form of grass every day, whether it be um, wheat, rice, corn, oats, barley, millet, rye. But I guess in that list, nowhere are you gonna find couch grass. One single spike can be anywhere from eight inches to well, let's take a look here. This is quite tall. Let me grab my ruler. There we go. There's our 12 inches or 30 centimeters. So this one particular piece of couch grass is taller than that. This is, as I mentioned, an Elemis, which is Elemis repens. And there are different species of Elemis. So how do we know that this is couch grass? Technically speaking, let's see here. It's recognized from its very tall and slender spike, which you're gonna have to take for granted that it was very tall and very erect at one point. I did obviously take them out of the ground and I've washed them. And although this is going to be really difficult, I'm going to have to do some close-up photography in the seed head part, part of the plant. Hang on here. Let's see. This is about as best as I'm going to be able to do. There are oppressed spikelets. And each spikelet, hang on a sec. Let me, I brought a safety pin out here to point where did that there it is okay so each each spikelet hold on bear with me please is one you can just see one of these is a spikelet right there and right there and right there so i'm trying my best i hope you're bearing with me here Okay, now they are really crowded on the stem, 
and the space between the nodes, between each each one of those that I was pointing to, is usually around three millimeters, which is very, very tiny. So that is, there is other ways to confirm the identity of couch grass, and I'll put a link to that below. The reason why I decided to pick a lot of this out of my garden, well, apart from the fact that I want my beans to thrive, is that these are not so much edible as they are medicinal. And it's the roots that are the medicinal part. Now, before I speak to that, let me just show you this one here. Look at how it's grown. So not only do you have fibrous roots, but it also spreads by rhizome. And there, and there. So wherever it touches the ground, it's going to spread roots. Now I mentioned that this is really good for our kidney health. It is a very powerful diuretic and it has a soothing anti-inflammatory healing effect on the lining of our bladder as well. It's rich in mucilage, volatile oils, and polysaccharides. And these are actually considered the active ingredients and they are found within the root. And I put that there so you can actually see how long the root system is on this particular piece. This is actually quite a good expectorant. So if you have a cough or bronchitis, laryngitis, this will help to soothe the mucosa in the chest. And it's very effective in helping to clear catarrhal congestion. Actually not that part, the root. With these, I'll be making a tincture. The rich silica content has a healing effect on lungs, making it very useful after someone has experienced a chest infection. And again, everything I'm speaking about right now is proven and it's coming from the roots, not the green part, not the leafy or the foliage. And I'm going to put a link below to an incredible document that explains more medicinal effects of, the, of this from the European Union. This is actually really good, couch grass. The, again, the rhizome or the root system, because it, ca it contains inositol, if I'm pronouncing that right. And that's a compound that prevents the accumulation of fat and cholesterol in our liver. And it can help prevent fatty liver disease, especially when it's used in conjunction with choline. Now as for the grass itself, from a medicinal factor, our pets, our cats, our dogs, they seek out grass when they're having digestive problems and their top choice, if it's available, is couch grass. They seem to instinctively know what is beneficial to them. And this is one of the reasons why another common name for this is dog grass. It has a rich, rich history that dates back thousands of years. And Culpepper actually said a lot about that. And instead of reading off what he said, take a look for yourself. So as I mentioned, couch grass is really well known as an herbal medicine. And for thousands of years, a decoction was made using these roots. And it was very useful in treating a wide range of different disorders from urinary problems to kidney to liver. Now, before I go any further, I do need to stress that if you're pregnant or you're breastfeeding or you have any other um, if you have a health condition that's going on, never ever try to treat yourself because sometimes you can make a mistake if you are on any other medications 
Um, and, and again, to stress that if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, always consult with your healthcare pr practitioner before you use this or any other herbal preparation. You don't want to have anything go wrong. Culpepper also said that apparently one half acre of couch grass was worth about five acres of carrots twice over. Now what he meant by that exactly, whether it meant whether he meant it from a medicinal factor or food, I don't know. There seems to be some history in regards to this being used as a coffee substitute, the root that is. Um, good luck, how much, like, just think about how much you would have to dig up to get enough to make a beverage, let alone drying this out, grinding it down and, and turning it into, adding it or making a coffee substitute. I just can't see that, but who knows, right? And apparently back in history and where exactly, I don't know, but I think this was in Asia, People would take the root, grind it down, and add it to the wheat flour. And they did this when there were times of famine and drought. Now, what does this have? Carbohydrates, inositol, mannitol, mucilage, flavonoids. This is rich, absolutely rich. Bottom line, what you can do with this, of course, we're not cows. We are not meant to eat grass. But we can take this, we can juice it, add it to our smoothies. We can take the greens, we can dry these out, grind it into a powder, add it into anything. Why rip it out and throw it into a compost bag when you can rip it out, wash it up, and as I mentioned, I'm gonna be tincturing the roots I'm definitely going to be drying this out and grinding it into a powder to use in the kitchen, not just for my husband and I, but also for Chance. And apparently when the shoots are very, very young and the leaves, you can supposedly eat them. I can't confirm that. I don't know whether you're gonna digest it properly or not. And some other edible grasses include brome, crab, couch, well, the couch grass you're obviously looking at, canary, timothy, blue, and bristle grasses. And I just have to show you my stinging nettle bucket. <laughs> Somehow the stinging nettle made it home one day and it likes to come up year after year, including over there. Anyways, let's go back to the garden. Thank you for watching each and every one of you. To all my subscribers, a huge, huge thank you. And if you're new to my channel, if you can do me the kindness and consider subscribing. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to share it in your social media. And for those of you who have been with me quite some time, you would know that this garden right here at the side of my house was the site of a video I did last year and I'll do, I'll put the link below and it was called the ginormous lamb's quarters. As you can see, it's not here this year. Instead, I have pole beans and bush beans and I had some radish as well, but I'm letting it go to seed right now. So that way I have lots of seed for next year. But the lamb's quarters still wants to grow, of course. And I let it because it is incredible food. Anyways, thank you for watching.